Senator Sullivan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I want to thank my friend from Georgia here for letting me cut in line uh, on the questioning. General, good to see you again, and uh, thanks for all you're doing. I think there's safe to say there's a lot of us who are glad you're in your, the position you're in, and it's, I know it's a difficult uh, challenge, so thanks for your service. Um, a, lot of, a lot of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle here have been talking about the importance of allies. I know you get it. I think we all get it. Um, whether it's China or Russia, having our allies on board and expanding that network is really important. So uh, you have our full support on that. Uh, I do want to respond to Senator Warren's comment. Um, you know, the second time in the last two days we've heard colleagues, and I, I have the utmost respect for my colleagues on the other side, particularly on this committee, about how the president needs to get his people out to get people in positions, ambassadors, assistant secretaries. I agree, and I think we could have maybe a little deal here among uh, Democrats and Republicans. We'll encourage the White House to get more nominees out, but my colleagues on the other side can't complain about it like Senator Warren was just doing, and then go to the unprecedented lengths that they have been doing to block and delay and make sure President Trump uh, doesn't get his nominees confirmed. So can't have it both ways, Senator Warren and others. So we'll work with the President, then when they come to the floor, let's move them not unprecedented blocking, which has been happening, which doesn't help the country, doesn't help our national security, and it's a little uh, hypocritical to be complaining when, when they get to the floor, they never get moved. But that's not your problem. That's our problem. Um, I'd actually like to talk uh, about the Arctic, and I know it's an area that you've been focused on, and we appreciate that. There's a number of us beyond just me being from Alaska who are concerned about it. How many bases in Russia are the Russians building or refurbishing in the Arctic? Do you have a sense of that? Which would include their uh, new Arctic military command. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, so they're, they're, um, they're essentially, the majority of this is refurbishing old bases, probably seven to nine. Uh, in particular those that are at the beginning and the end of what is the northern sea route uh, across there. And those are the key places. Uh, so we're watching that closely in terms of militarization of the Arctic. And what do you think their intentions are? And let me ask, are they installing any systems, uh, including the um, fielding of major uh, icebreakers that would give them de facto control of the northern sea route? Is that what, is that what they're trying to do, you think? What are, what are their that, intentions? Well, they're, they're clearly... They're, militarizing that part of the world, what do you think they're trying to achieve? Their stated intent is to provide um, uh, safeguards, security uh, for the economic well-being of the Arctic. It's a very, um, you know, their statement is along those lines. But if you look at what they're putting into place, they would have the capability, I think, in some time, um, you know, perhaps two or three years uh, to control the Northern Sea Route if they chose to do so. And do you think that's in the interest of the United States that uh, a country like Russia would have a de facto control over a new and potentially incredibly important uh, line of communication through the world? No, I don't. <laughs> so in our Arctic policy that this committee recommended or actually requested that the Secretary of Defense uh, promulgate uh, two years ago, we talked about the ability to control that sea route, to run fawn ops there. Are we falling behind in terms of the capabilities that we have vis-a-vis -vis the Russians to do that? Um, we're not keeping pace. Thank you, General. Um, I wanted to ask another issue with regard to uh, shortfalls that you may or may not have in, in the UCOM AOR to counter and deter uh, increasing Russian aggression. What's your thought of our shortfalls with regard to missile defense, and how do we need to address that? We have capable missile defense systems. Um, when you look at missile defense, though, I think the things that we need to focus on are, first of all, we, we need to focus again on short-range and medium-range missile technology. Uh, you know, we've, we have um, been operating in environments where uh, we weren't, it wasn't a contested environment, et cetera. Uh, that's not the case any longer. 
So we need to look at those systems. Uh, we need to look at the interoperability with our allies because we can't do this in Europe without doing it uh, correctly together. And then we need to look at other parts of this, passive parts of our uh, integrated air missile defense as well. Um, so I, that's how I would answer that. I think it's a, it's a holistic system that we've got to put together. And it's the systems within the mid-range that I'm, and probably short-range, that I'm most concerned about today. Okay. Thank you very much, General.